The Gauss-Jordan elimination method is another way of solving a system of linear equations. In prior lessons in algebra, other methods have been introduced, such as substitution, elimination, and graphing. The Gauss-Jordan method utilizes matrices to rearrange and reduce equations within the given system such that the equilibrium of the system is preserved while solving for the involved variables. To successfully use this method, first arrange the given system so that the x variables appear first, y variables next, then equal signs, then finally the constants on the left-hand sides of the equations. Start by arranging the system in a matrix form. Simply transfer the x coefficients to form the first column the y coefficients in the second column, and finally transfer in the constants. Draw a line to separate coefficients from constants. Since this matrix shows coefficients and constants, it's called an augmented matrix. The aim of the Gauss-Jordan method is to transform the initial matrix to the identity matrix through applying legitimate elimination steps. The goal matrix must have a diagonal line of ones and everything else as zero. If you're wondering why this is the destination matrix, transform the identity matrix back to equation form. If only one element in each row is one, then each row will give the value of a different variable. For example, row one boils down to x equals a number a, and row two, y equals a number b. Graphically, the coordinate point a and b is the point where all lines intersect, which is the solution of the system of equations. To transform matrices and obtain the goal matrix, the Gauss-Jordan method allows only certain operations. Two rows can be interchanged. Two rows can be added or subtracted. A row can be multiplied or divided by a number. Finally, a combination of all three are allowed. A common mistake done using this method is adding or subtracting a number to or from a row. This operation will result in breaching the system's balance. Also, operations must be applied to all elements of a row. Now let's see how the Gaussian operations can be geared toward solving this system. Before going into the steps, let's go over some terminology used in this video so the process is meaningful and comprehensible. Each number showing in a matrix is called an element. An element is located at the intersection of a row and a column. Therefore, each element has a unique position in the matrix. The position of an element is defined by the row and column numbers. For example, negative 4 is element 1, 2, since it's located at the intersection of row 1, column 2. 10 is element 2, 1. Referencing rows using their numbers helps in writing out the necessary operations to transform matrices. In this video, row numbers will be referred to as capital R with a subnumber that's the row number. So row 1 is R sub 1 and row 2 is R sub 2. Now let's start. First work on changing element 1, 1 to 1. A legitimate way to do so is dividing all elements of the first row by 3. The problem with this move is having to deal with clumsy fractions right off the bat, which will eventually cause even more clumsier fractions later on. Another way to accomplish one for this element is to multiply three times the first row, so this element becomes nine, then subtract the second row, which has a 10 in its first element, minus the product nine. Let's try that. Element one, one is three. Multiply three times three, it's nine. 
then subtract 10 minus 9, which is the desired one. No need to worry about how this move will affect the rest of elements on the first row since the desired one has been accomplished at the desired location on that row. Perform the same operation for the rest of elements. Multiply negative 4 times 3, that's negative 12, then subtract 1 minus negative 12, which is 13. Finally, do the same for the constant. Multiply 3 times negative 5, that's negative 15, then subtract negative 2 minus negative 15, which is 13. Note that only the first row has been changed, whereas row 2 has been used in this operation but remained unchanged. Now we have 1 in the top of the diagonal. Next, work to have a 0 in the element right below the diagonal 1. Multiply the first row times 10, then subtract the second row from the product. This time, the first row will remain as is, but the second row will be updated. Multiply 10 times 1, that's 10, then subtract 10 minus 10, that's 0. Move on to the next element. Multiply 10 times 13, that's 130, then subtract 130 minus 1, that's 129. Finally, multiply 10 times the constant 13, that's again 130, then subtract that minus negative 2, which is 132. Now we have a 0 right under the 1 in column 1. Now work on changing the diagonal element located at row 2, column 2, to be 1. Beware that the next operations must also result in retaining 1 and 0 in the first column. Sometimes fractions are inevitable, so divide the second row by 129. 0 over 129 is 0, 129 over itself is 1, and 132 over 129 is reduced to 44 over 43. Last step is to legitimately change the element right above that 1 to 0. Multiply the second row times 13, then subtract the product minus the first row. 13 times 0 is 0, then subtract 0 minus 1, that's negative 1. Next, 13 times 1 is 13, and 13 minus 13 is 0. 44 over 43 times 13 is 572 over 43. Then subtract 13 from that fraction. You might need to review on finding a common denominator to find this difference. It's 13 over 43. Now let's go back to element 1, 1. That's an easy fix. Multiply the first row times negative 1. So negative 1 becomes 1, 0 remains as is, and 13 over 43 changes to negative 13 over 43. The answer is x equals negative 13 over 43 and y equals 44 over 43. This is the point where the two lines intersect at. Let's try the same method on a different system. First, rearrange the first equation to bring the x term to the left side and the constant to the right side. Now, write the system in matrix form. Element 1, 1 is an easy fix. Multiply first row times negative 1. Negative 1 becomes 1, 1 becomes negative 1, and negative 6 becomes 6. Next, change element 2, 1 to 0. Multiply the first row times 2, then subtract the product minus the second row. 2 times 1 is 2, then 2 minus 2 is 0. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Finally, 2 times 6 is 12, 12 minus 7 is 5. Next, we need a 1 for element 2, 2, so divide the second row by negative 5. 0 over negative 5 is 0, 
negative 5 over negative 5 is 1, and 5 over negative 5 is negative 1. Now it's time to change element 1, 2 to 0. Simply add the first and second rows. 0 and 1 is 1. 1 and negative 1 is 0. And negative 1 and 6 is 5. Since the goal matrix has been obtained, it's time to find the values for the variables. X equals 5 and Y equals negative 1. Let's try another problem. Before setting up the matrix, rearrange the second equation so the X and Y variables align. Now write out the matrix. Work on changing element 1, 1 to have a 1 in it. Divide the second row by 4, then add the quotient to the first row. This will produce 1 in that element. Perform the same operation on element 1, 2 and the constant. Now work on element 2, 1 to change it to 0. Multiply the first row times 4, then add the product to row 2. Next, change element 2, 2 to be 1. Divide the second row by 44. Multiply the second row times 8, then subtract the product minus the first row. Finally, go back to element 1, 1 and change it back to 1 by multiplying that row times negative 1. The solution for the system is x equals 4 and y equals 3. For this system, rearrange the second equation to align x and y terms on the left side and the constants on the right side. Write out the matrix. To change element 1, 1 to 1, multiply negative 2 times the second row, then subtract the product minus the first row. Negative 2 times negative 9 is 18. 18 minus 17 is 1. Apply the same operation to the rest of elements of row 1. Next, change element 2, 1 to 0 by multiplying 9 times the first row, then add the product to the second row. 9 times 1 is 9, then 9 plus negative 9 is 0. Do the same for the rest of row 2. Now divide the second row over negative 95 to obtain 1 for element 2, 2. The final step is to transform element 1, 2 to 0 by multiplying 11 times the second row, then adding the product to the first row. x is 0 and y is negative 1. Let's use the Gauss-Jordan elimination method to solve a three-equation system. Write out the matrix. For missing variables in the second and third equations, place zeros for those elements. Same processes will be followed as two equation matrices, but the path to the goal matrix will be a bit lengthy. Start by changing element 1, 1 to 1. Add the first two rows. 2 and negative 1 is 1. 3 and 2 is 5. Negative 1 and 0 is negative 1 and negative 4 and 4 is 0. Change element to 1 to 0. Again, add the first two rows. 1 and negative 1 is 0. 5 and 2 is 7. Negative 1 and 0 is negative 1. And 0 and 4 is 4. 0 is already there for element 3, 1. So the next step is to change element 2, 2 to 1. This can be accomplished by subtracting the second row minus twice of the third row. Let's try that. 2 times 0 is 0, then 0 minus 0 is 0. 2 times 3 is 6, then 7 minus 6 is 1. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, then negative 1 minus negative 8 is 7. Finally, 2 times negative 9 is negative 18, then 4 minus negative 18 is 22. Next, change element 1, 2 to 0. Multiply 5 times the second row, then subtract the first row minus that product. 
Next, work on changing element 3, 2 to 0. Multiply 3 times the second row, then subtract this product minus the third row. Next step is turning element 3, 3 to 1 by dividing the third row over 25. Next in line is element 2, 3. Change it to 0 by multiplying the third row times 7, then subtracting the second row minus that product. The final step is to change element 1, 3 to 0. Do that by multiplying 36 times the third row, then add the product to row 1. X is negative 2, Y is 1, and Z equals 3.